Motorola, one of the pioneers of the cell phone, now owned by Lenovo, of all people. And I can't get over saying how big of a disappointment that whole transaction was. Regardless, here we are with the Moto Z, the second modular phone of this year after the G5. And this will be a dual review of the Z and the Z Force. I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja, and here's my review. Motorola was the pioneer of the droid phone from Verizon, and since then, their partnership with Big Red has been real. One of my favorite phones of all time came from that, and that was the Droid Turbo, which is a Motorola phone. And then we have the Droid Turbo 2. Both are fantastic phones, which leads us to this phone. This is the Moto Z, one of the most uniquely designed phones around, and it's really a love it or hate it situation. The Moto Z and Force both are relatively the same phone, but from here on out, everything else I'll mention will be the same unless noted otherwise. I'll just say Z going forward to prevent confusion. The Z and Force share the same body design for the most part. The Force is a little bit taller, wider, and thicker, and also weighs a bit more at 5.75 ounces versus the standard Z at 4.80 ounces. That is due to the fact of the larger battery on the Force giving you 3500 milliamp versus the vanilla Z at 2600 milliamp. When you're holding both of the hands, you can feel a slight difference, but overall the in-hand experience was pretty much the same for me. The phone's design to me looks great. From its fingerprint scanner square at the bottom to the little Moto logo and these little dots here, which I presume are sensors flanking the button. The left bezel is completely bare and up top is the SIM card SD tray and on the right you have the volume buttons and also a power button. These buttons are much smaller than other Android devices which sometimes makes it hard to find but for appearance it looks pretty good. The power button also has a bit of texture on it which feels good and leaves you with a satisfying click when pressing it and that's how you can discern those apart. It's still the same size as the volume rockers but the texture is good enough for me. On the back is where things get pretty interesting. You are greeted with the camera, which protrudes out drastically with the attached flash. It looks jarring for sure, but it sits flush once you add one of the Moto Mods. Work your way down the back and you'll find the connectors for the Moto Mods. With my review unit, I was given the Tumi battery pack and also one of the wooden style backs. There's also a mini projector and a speaker that I did not get. At the bottom we have our USB-C port, and what's noticeably different is that there isn't a headphone jack, but it does come with a USB-C to 3.5mm jack, which is cumbersome to keep around, but it does encourage you to invest in some good Bluetooth headphones. The device is extremely slippery and pretty slick to hold. The camera protrusion also is pretty awkward to work around, and when you have one of the Moto Mods on it, it becomes much more manageable to hold but when it's in its vanilla form factor, it's really tough to hold. Thankfully, dbrand is here to save the day. You can add a skin to change the way your device looks, and it also makes it easier to hold due to the grip, and also it's a lot better on fingerprints, as this phone does obtain fingerprints easily. Hit the links down below to dbrand your device. The screen is also another difference between the two devices. Most notably, the Z is rocking a Gorilla Glass 4 and the Force brings you a shatterproof display. Although I dig shatterproofing, it is prone to get deep scratches and scuffs after a few drop. Regardless, each screen tech has their own pros and cons. And as far as quality of the display, the Gorilla Glass looks a whole lot better than the shatterproof display. I mean, the viewing angles are solid plus deep blacks with AMOLED technology built into it. It's also a Quad HD display, which gives you those really sharp images and makes Tech Ninja videos look awesome. And after speaking to a few other reviewers, it seems like they're all having a ton of little scratches on both of these screens. My Gorilla Glass Moto Z is actually scratched horribly without a drop or anything out of the ordinary. I put it in my pocket like I put every other phone in my pocket, so I'm not sure what's going on here, but this is a pretty big drawback and something to keep an eye on. In classic Motorola fashion, this device feels like stock Android with a few great enhancements on top. Motorola has been really good on updates even after Lenovo acquisition, except if you have a droid device. That's something to look out for as Motorola's track record is not too good with the droid branded devices. Take it as you wish. 
If updates is something that's really important to you, that's something you should consider. But right now, Onboard is rocking Android 6.0.1, and they say upgrades are planned for it, just don't know when. Motorola adds some excellent nuggets within the OS, and a lot of old school Motorola things you come to expect are still there, like the chop chop flashlight, and also the flick of the wrist to get to the camera. And furthermore, you can find a few more goodies like a custom wake up command, so you can say whatever you want, and it wakes your phone up for Google now. There's also the always on display, which I think Motorola pioneered, and it's more or less the same for the previous versions, but it works really well still. I would love to see an update to the screen, but it's still the best one out there. Now let's slide over to the camera, and as mentioned previously, the camera on the Force is a 21 megapixel shooter with an f1.8, and also it's using 1.12 micron pixels, which translates to one of Motorola's best cameras. It's a bit slower than other flagships out there, but the details on this camera are really solid. Also, for lower light situations, you can still nab some pretty nice shots. The software on board is very Motorola-esque with a few features that are a little bit different. Now, this is a different take that Lenovo is using for the UI, but it looks very similar. For me, it sort of ruins some of the simplicity of the past Motorola's and, and sort of left us with a menu structure that's a little bit boring and confusing at the same time. The front facing five megapixel selfie is really good as well. And there's a significant difference between the back cameras and the front cameras as the front facing camera is lacking a bit of detail. The front facing camera also has a LED flash, which does a decent job at pulling in some light. Although I don't recommend this unless you are in a situation where you have to have it as this uh, sometimes can make your image looks really, really washed out. The interface is the same on the standard Z, but with the loss of megapixels and you don't see much difference. But when zooming into the photos, that's when you can really see the difference. Regardless, both cameras are solid, but if you had to choose between the two, the Force works best in pretty much all circumstances. The Force has a larger battery, which testing got me through a day and a bit more, versus the standard had me reaching for my charger at night. So that's pretty much the phone. Really good phone, but we have to talk about the Moto Mods. So right now there are add-in modules that you can do to your phone. So you can get something like a projector or a external battery pack, a speaker, and also some different backs. In my review unit, I was given the battery mod and also the wooden back. Now I was impressed with the performance of the battery mod and I also enjoyed the thickness the device gave me. And also the software inside, I can decide how the battery mod was to react, which was actually really cool. And you're able to do uh, firmware updates to these, to these mods. When they're plugged into your phone, you can actually update them via the software if there's one available. Now I found myself rocking the battery mod, even if it was depleted, just because it made the device thicker, which was easier for me to hold and you didn't have that protruding back. But of course, that's still personal preference. So I have not been able to use them all. And of course, as they come in, I will start doing reviews on those. So be looking out for that. Regardless, this phone is fantastic. And as I mentioned before, droids on Verizon have not had the best track record with getting updates, but um, they do come eventually. And also the screen has received a lot of scratches. Not sure why, and it's not just me. Beyond that, I'll keep my eye out for the GSM version of this device. And this might be something that I pick up for myself. As always guys, my name is Kevin the Tech Ninja. If you wanna know more about this device, hit the links down below. Also for sample photos, hit the links down below and hit that subscribe too. First time watching my channel, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day and I'll holler at you folks later. Peace.